gaping Rosie. I saw a tweet this morning that was Taylor made for you. This is it. Kodai Senga has made it clear to the Mets that he wants Yamamoto as a teammate as we say good morning to you. Are you kidding me? Mets fans salivating at that potential one too. Does this have any legs? Is there a big relationship there? Good morning. Yes, Lauren, uh, good morning. This is certainly a major story internationally, yeah. you would have to say, that uh, Kodai Senga has voiced that he would love for Yamamoto to be part of his team there with the New York Mets. I would say this, first and foremost, the one thing that makes this practical and reasonable even is that if you consider that Yamamoto would likely come over and be on that pitch every six days routine, well, the Mets are already used to doing that with Senga there. Senga typically has been starting with five days of rest, the one day of rest beyond what is typical in Major League Baseball. And so as a result, uh, Yamamoto would be very much in that same routine. Here is what the current rotation options look like internally. Uh, it, it is, to me, very likely that if the Mets are going to make a play to compete for a division title in 2024. And again, we're still trying to see uh, what the new Stearns, Mendoza administration will be doing in, the, in that regard with how the roster is going to look, uh, but they would have to get at least one high-level starting pitcher. I, I do tend to think, Lauren, that, that the Dodgers probably have a little better chance of signing Yamamoto and, and the Giants may as well than what the Mets could offer. It does to me, and I have a very strong uh, a strong endorsement to see what Kodai Senga would like to join forces with Yamamoto. Of course, both have pitched for the Japanese national team in the past. There's a good relationship there. There's the the, uh, the resume for Yamamoto with the Oryx, the Buffaloes, of course, Masataka Yoshida, a teammate of Yamamoto's for many years there with Oryx. So perhaps the Boston Red Sox that may have an edge as well based on the relationship with Masataka Yoshida. What I do know is this, Lauren, this is the perfect off season for me. It is around the clock coverage <laughs> on both sides of the Pacific. I am loving this and I can't wait for the winter meeting. It means no sleep for you, but you wouldn't have it any other way. Kodai, a three-time NPB All-Star. These guys have had beautiful careers before coming over to Major League Baseball. Okay, so I heard you say Mets, Giants, Dodgers, Red Sox. Any other team? I mean, are we just guessing at this point, JP? Are we guessing? No, there's. I would say, Lauren, that there are there are some teams that have shown a bit more uh, seriousness in scouting. Where's the, the Dodgers fit in? in recent years? Right. I, I would mention too that the Yankees fit into that conversation. Okay. The Cardinals have become a team that have, have really dedicated a lot of resources to scouting in Asia in recent years. The Cubs, I think, are now a, a bit of a hot name because uh, whether it's Otani or others, uh, they knew now I have a new manager in Craig Council. So. I, I've made this point before, but I think it's, it's worth underscoring here and really emphasizing. If you are the agent for Yamamoto, for Blake Snell, as we just talked about in the last block, uh, for Sonny Gray, the right teams need starting pitching. If you want to have your player maximize his value, the, the large market teams are the ones that are in the mix for starting pitching. You see uh, the end of the no-hitter there for Yamamoto. He, of course, pitched his team all the way to game seven of the Japan series. So he's pitched a lot of high-profile games. Uh, I, I cannot wait to see where he's going to pitch in 2024. Yeah, Yamamoto about as highly touted as they come. We're coming off a night celebrating the game's best on the mound. Garrett Cole and Blake Snell. You had a Cy Young ballot. Did you nail it? Let's show it on the screen. Yes, Lauren, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the question. I, I was an American League voter this year, and here is where I decided on my ballot. I'm, I'm certainly open to questions and scrutiny of how I arrange things. I really did like Gray, I thought, was the second best pitcher in the American League after Cole. This became, by the end of the year, Lauren, a clear choice, as we know now, Cole was unanimous. Um, he distinguished himself late. You think about his closing argument, he pitched brilliantly twice against the Blue Jays late in the season, a complete game shutout. He was quite simply the best pitcher in the American League, start to finish. And I was just so impressed by the way that Garrett handled this season in New York. We know how many ups and downs they had as, as a ball club. He stood tall. Kyle Bradish, I, I certainly respect uh, the, the different voters that put him fourth and, and had him at a, at a very, or even third, and had him at a very high point on their ballot. I, I just thought with Bradish, we, I didn't quite see enough innings to put him ahead of both Pablo Lopez 
and George Kirby. So that's so I I differed a bit with what the, the final top five ended up being. I just thought Kirby's dominance late in the season. He pitched brilliantly on the final weekend of the year. I, I'm I'm always watching Lauren to see how pitchers finish this season, and I just thought that uh, Lopez and Kirby both distinguished themselves late and earned those votes from me for the fourth and fifth spot. If I was a rider, I'd be dangerous. JP is dangerous. Garrett Cole and Blake Snell, both team guys, but this matters to them in a major way. Can we end on a beautiful note? JP, I mean, you and I both share our admiration for the armed forces. There is an Army grad added to the Reds 40 man, and I'm hearing it's quite the story. Share it with us, would you? Remarkable story, Lauren. Congratulations to Jacob Herdebees. He has now been added to the Reds 40-man roster, one step closer to making it to the major leagues. He is a really athletic and, as as you would certainly not be surprised to learn, a great leader, tremendous person in the clubhouse, work ethic and character off the charts. He was one of the first players uh, who was able to sign with the Reds following a change in in defense, Defense Department policy that allows you to play professional sports and effectively not have to go right into the active duty deployment uh, following uh, your your service academy graduation. So Jacob has done amazing work, and he's and he's he shared with me before, Lauren. Th- th- this is a form of serving and representing the armed forces as well, because you're able to connect with people through sports and, and show what the armed forces are all about through through professional sports, through representing an organization and a sport in addition to our amazing country. So certainly, I know Jacob has such great reverence for those who have served in the past and, and just really respects what he's able to do now going forward. And just and he was able to, he graduated in 2020. So in the midst of the pandemic, he was not drafted. He signed as a free agent and was able to continue his dream at that point in time. So I'm just, I have huge admiration for Jacob, who he is uh, as a person and as a ball player as well. And it doesn't surprise me to see what he's what he's made of his professional career because he entered there with nothing given, a, a very uh, low low bonus level of, of a contract because of where the, the draft was in 2020. He has earned this right, Lord, and it will not surprise me at all if we're talking about him on MLB Central this year. Let's go. Thank you to the major leagues. Form of service. The form of service and representation. What was that, GV? Thank you that's, so much. That's JT. I, I think that was Matt Baskurgeon's soundboard. No, trying that's... to mock uh, the, the fact that I'm in the piano room right now. <laughs> Little does he know <laughs> that my wife, Dr. Alexis Lopez, could sit down right there and play Chopin without any music for I the next that. 15 minutes. <laughs> She's on a star of the family. So I love that. Okay, that terrific. Show, oh my gosh, there's so much noise. Oh my gosh. I have little that. doubt that your wife can do that, and I am. Is she home? I don't, I don't mean to be she's personal. Actually, she, she's actually picking up some groceries, but I'll, I'll, I'll play this back for her. She is a fan of hot stove, and we'll see if maybe we can get her on the show. <laughs> Said nobody ever, first of all, so you're a liar. But wait a minute. If, 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 uh, if we could just engineer a live Chopin recital <laughs> while you're doing a report, I think we would break new ground on this show for the first time in 11 years. I love it. I, and I'm pretty sure that, that live performance of Chopin is in the public domain for long enough. I, I think it, it would certainly pass muster with our clearance department if it's performed live by a member of my immediate family, and, and so I'll, I'll try to set that up. Wife of J.P. Morosi performing show My wife's smoke, so yeah. it makes me smoke. We know that, D-Row. <laughs> awesome.